Hi guys, um, this is our third class and I'm really excited because today we are going to talk about a kind of difficult subject which is called database. So actually I just created this drawing for you to understand what's going on. <clears throat> so basically when we have a website, we have three different fields in that website on a form like name, address and email. Uh, if someone fills these fields out and clicks on the submit button, uh, our aim is just to get this data to the database table. And the database table looks like this. <clears throat> this is still not created. We are going to create this, um, these tables. Or this. Uh, if we talk about one table, then we are going to uh, create this one table. The table looks like this. Uh, there is the header row. The header row includes the name of the different columns, like ID, name, address, and email. And uh, below the, the header items, you can see one record. Uh, this, this record is actually just a sample record I just put in the, data, in the database. Uh, it has an ID, uh, name, address, and email. So what do we call as a record? A record is one row basically in the database, that's called record. So, and now let's see how to create a database on our local machine. Um, first of all, you have to go on to google.com and when you go to the Google, um, you know, search engine, you just have to type in download PostgreSQL and then you get uh, different um, links. So if you click on the postgresql.org um, link and then you will get some instructions how to download the PostgreSQL uh, database onto your local machine. You have to choose what operating system you have. If you have Windows, then choose the Windows one. If you have Mac OS or Apple computer, just choose the Mac OS operating system. Okay. Um, once um, you download it, you have to read the instructions how to install. That is not the subject of our course. Uh, please get some help uh, regarding the installation of the PostgreSQL uh, database. Um, regarding the software we are going to use to manage uh, the database, uh, we use pgAdmin. So when you install uh, the PostgreSQL database and you don't get the pgAdmin software with that, you can download it separately. Just click on the link on pgadmin.org and you get instructions um, how to download this software. Once you are done with that, basically, then you have to type in pgadmin in the, in the search field. And, um, you know, you, you get the pgadmin. And then once you click on the pgadmin, um, you will see this kind of uh, software user interface. That is the pgAdmin interface. And let me explain what's going on here, basically. So I already have here three different, um, uh, three, three different servers. These are database servers I created myself. Uh, I assume you will have nothing there because that's a brand new uh, software you just installed. So probably you, you don't even have the server group name here. So what you can do is um, when you click on the object, you will see the create uh, menu. And then here in the object, basically you can create different objects. So let's see. So here you have the chance to create a server group. So when you create a server group, you will get something like this servers three with me or trial. I have already two different server groups. So the server three and trial. If you don't have any, click on server group and create one. You can name it anything you like, you know, so it, it depends on you what name you give. And once you have uh, the server group, the next step, you go on the server group and uh, under create, you click on the server because you have to create a database server on your local machine. Give it a name, like let's say, or you just give a name like course um, English. And 
as I told you, you can call it anything you like. And the server group is because it's under servers. Uh, I will choose servers, but you can choose what, what you have there, your server group name. And in the connection, you have to define where this database is going to be um, located. So it's going to be on the local host. It means when you want to use this database, you have to <clears throat> give the link of the database. It's your local machine, so that's why you use a local host. The port is uh, 5432, and the maintenance database you have when you installed the PostgreSQL database, it's Postgres, it's a default one, and the username is Postgres. And here you have to give um, the password when you installed, um, you know, the PostgreSQL on your computer, you have to provide a password there. That's what you have to give here. And then if it's correct and you click on save, then you see on the left-hand side, the course English server was created. So that means I created a database server, but the thing is that I, I still have to create a lot of other things. It's not enough because basically uh, we just created the server. The next step is um, you see the databases. I have already three different databases here because I created this uh, before, but probably you only have the Postgres. So what you need to do, we need a different one. So if you go on databases and you right click on that and uh, choose create and create database. And then um, you give a name um, to this database. It can be anything. So let's say website data, that's how I call it. And the owner can stay Postgres and uh, the definition and the security we don't touch now. So it can be like, like uh, it is right now and you click on save. Um, database website already exists. Okay, if it already exists, we have to choose another name, website data English, let's say. So I choose this one, and then I click on save. And this time you see uh, the website data English database um, had been created. So we just created a new database under the new server. Uh, course English. So that's that was the next step to create the database. But we still don't have a schema because when you create a database, it's very important to create a schema which we are going to use. So click on the schema and we see one default schema inside, or we need another one. So if we uh, click on the schema and create a schema, and then we say, that's the website um, schema English, let's say. And then I click on save. And you see, here's the schema in which we can put our database table under tables. So why do we need that? Remember, so when we create this database table, we need it because we want to put all the data from the website when someone clicks on the submit into this database table. And in order for us to be able to create this database table, we had to create first a schema. And under the schema, we have the chance to create a table. When you create tables, you don't see any tables there yet. So if you right click and you say table, create table, we can give um, a name. For example, it can be website um, data info. We can call this way. And um, basically here is the schema. And let's say there, there are no columns inside yet. So we just click on save. And as you see, the website data info table had been created now. So we are still missing one thing. Look, here's the table. The table is created, but the columns, the column names are not created yet. That's what we need to do. So how can we do that? 
So basically, here is the table. Here is the, the, you know, the table we created. We click on this arrow, and then we go down until we see the columns, right? You right-click the column, you click on Create Column, and the first column is the name, right? Because we need the name. If you click on the Definition tab, you have to choose what type of field that is. It's going to be a text type because the name is a text, right? And then I click on Save. You see on the left-hand side, the first column name had been created. So that means we created this column, but we are still missing the two remaining columns. So what we can do is we will repeat the step, like uh, create column, and then I say I will create the address, which is also a text type. So let's say text, and then I save it. So you see, here's the address, and I'm still missing the email. So I'll click on the create again, column, and I give it a name, email, and under definition, I will choose text again because it's going to be text. So I click and save. Okay, right now I have the table and I have three columns in it. So we achieve what we wanted here. So three different columns. The ID is automatic. So I didn't create the ID column because it's going to be automatic. So you will see it for yourself. So now that we have that, basically what we can do is um, we can go into the table and then um, right click and then view data and all rows. So when I click on all, all rows, I can see the headers are here, but there is no information there. So I want to put uh, one record in that. So to see if it's working fine, what can I do? I will click on the table columns, right click, uh, sorry, here, right click. And then I will choose the scripts. And then I have to choose the insert script. When I choose the insert script, actually here is a SQL script, um, which shows me I can put some data into this uh, database. So here, instead of the question marks, I will delete the question mark and put uh, um, this kind of quotation mark. And then I, I just um, give it a name like John. And uh, the, that's the name column. The second column is the address. Uh, let's give it an address. So it can be like uh, the three road avenue, uh, Boston. Okay, and the third one is the email. It can be like john.bull at gmail.com, right? And then when I put these values in it and I click on this uh, sign here, the, this is the execute. So here you can see the query returned successfully. That means we put one record into this database table. How can we check it? So if we go onto this website data info table, right click and I say view and all rows. And then here I can see the information I put there is there in the database table. Uh, let's check. So one second, I will just draw it right. Okay, so you can see that the data we put there is there in the database table. So it was inserted. So that's fine. That's what I wanted to achieve. So basically, it's working fine. We did it there manually. But, <clears throat> you know, in the in our example, this will not be put there manually, but the back end will put there all the information, all the records. So that means when somebody fills out a form like this and clicks on the submit button, then those information will be listed here in this database table. And um, that's what I wanted to discuss today. I know it's a, a little long and kind of difficult, but if you check this video again, you will see how I created the database how I put the data in it, and then you have to understand the concept how the data will come here 
into this into this table. Thanks again, and we'll continue with the backend part next time. See you later.